Okay, let's get started by creating a new Google Analytics for account and property for our website. So if you go to google.com slash analytics, if you go to that page, it will bring you to this page right here. So if you already have an existing Google account, what you can do is just click on get started today and that's gonna allow you to get started with Google Analytics 4 or you can sign into Google Analytics 4 if you already have a profile set up. Now I do already have a property set up, so for me it might look a little bit different than it looks for you. When you click on get started today, what you are likely going to see is a page that looks like this one right here. Now if you already have an existing Google Analytics 4 profile, if we just go back really quick, I click on exit, then what you're going to do is you're gonna to go to the admin section of your existing Google Analytics 4 account, and through the admin section, what you can do is click on create account. So when you create an account, it's gonna look just like this. So I'm gonna set up a new account for my website, and so the very first thing is naming our new account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do brickpop.com for my account name. Now we're gonna scroll down here, account data and sharing settings. So this just depends on the options you wanna give over sharing your Google Analytics data. Um, I generally just share everything, but we'll click on next now. Okay, next we're gonna create a property. So our property name could be exactly the same as our account name, and I'll show you why that matters in a minute. Um, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, and you can create separate properties for different websites, or if you have an iOS app, or if you have an Android app. So in this case, we're doing this for brickpop.com, our website. So we're gonna name our property the same as our account, and then our reporting time zone, you just wanna set for your local time zone. So for me, I am currently in New York time, so that's where my local time zone is. Currency will be US dollar. You don't need to worry about advanced options because universal analytics properties are no longer collecting data. So we're gonna click on next here, and next is going to be describing your business. So now what you need to do is select your industry category. So for mine, it's going to be hobbies and leisure and then your business side size as far as how many employees your business has. So for mine, it's just going to be small, and we're gonna click on next. So next, you wanna choose your business objectives. So generally, what I recommend doing here when you're choosing your business objectives is just clicking on Get Baseline Reports. So just get started by clicking Get Baseline Reports. You don't need to add all of these other options here. We're just gonna click this one at the bottom and click on Create. So now the Google Analytics Terms of Service Agreement, we need to make sure we accept the uh, data processing terms here as required by the GDPR and additional terms applic applicable to data shared with Google, I accept. Also need to accept the measurement controller, controller data protection terms, so accept that as well. Make sure we accept all of our terms and now we wanna start collecting data. So it's really that simple to actually set up your Google Analytics 4 property. So what we can do now is we're gonna choose a platform. We're gonna choose web here. Obviously, if you're setting up an Android app or an iOS app, you would choose a different platform, but for the most part, most people are choosing web for their website when you set that up for the first time. So next, we're gonna set our website URL, so HTTPS, and ours is brickpop.com. Stream name, we can name, again, the same exact thing as our other ones. So we have brickpop.com for our stream, for our property, for our account. Enhanced measurement, you wanna make sure you enable enhanced measurement here. So this is gonna show that it's already gonna be measuring page views, scrolls, outbound clicks, site search, video engagement, file downloads, and form interactions. So you might as well measure all of these, even if you're not planning on having any file downloads or forms on your website, there's really no downside to using enhanced measurement and make sure you're measuring everything right when you set up your stream. So when we set up this, it's called a stream. So this is called our web stream. So it's a little bit different terminology than previously, but at this point we are ready to install Google Analytics 4. So our property is completely set up. So instead of installing it right this second, we're gonna click on the X, we're gonna click on the X again. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come back over here to, or if we come over here to next, and we're going to continue to home. And what we want, I just wanna show you accessing your account. So in your Google Analytics 4 account, so I set this one up just as an example. This is the one I'm currently using probably gonna end up switching over to this one. You'll actually see the old Universal Analytics property here. Um, but this is our current run right here. So you're gonna see analytics accounts, and then this is our properties and our apps. So brickpop.com, we know it's a web stream because obviously we have the .com there. So now what we need to do is actually install Google Analytics 4. Okay, let's go over how to do a manual installation of Google Analytics 4 on our WordPress website. So I have a WordPress website right here. You can also use the manual method if you're running a different website platform. Um, but what we're gonna start with is we're gonna go to our Google Analytics 4 property. And what you wanna do is when you're in your Google Analytics 4, go to the correct account, go to the correct property, 
and you want to start in the admin section. So on the left hand side, you're going to see all of these different links we can click. We want to click on admin at the very bottom left corner. That will bring you to this page right here and where you want to go is data streams. So through data streams, you should see your web stream right here. Since it's not installed, we have no data received in the past 48 hours. So we're going to click on the arrow over here on the right hand side. And what you're going to see data collection is not active if we scroll all the way to the bottom. So I always like to show this is view tag instructions because what Google Analytics 4 will actually do is look at your URL that you set up when you are setting up your Google Analytics 4 property. And it's going to say we detected WordPress on your website. Choose a plugin below. So I will go through how to set it up with a site kit plugin in a different video. But for right now, I want to show you how to install it manually. So to install manually, you're going to click on the tab right here at the very top, and that's going to open up our Google tag. So I would recommend using Google Tag Manager if you're going to install it using this method. However, you can still install it manually if you're not using Google Tag Manager, and you don't have to use Google Tag Manager. If you're not already using it, you don't have to set it up. So with our Google Tag, all we're going to do is copy this Google Tag here and come to the dashboard of our WordPress website. From the dashboard of our WordPress website, we want to go to Plugins, and we want to go to Add New. So the plugin that I would recommend using is you're going to search here for head footer post injections. So just type in head footer post injections. You can also just type in head footer post. This is the plugin that we're looking for. So if we click on it, you can see what it looks like. Very easy logo to see header and footer head footer and post injections. It's what it's called. And what you're going to see here is last updated four weeks ago saying untested with my version of WordPress, but I haven't had any issues with this plugin. I've been using it for years to install tags. So we're going to install this plugin right now, and then we are going to activate this plugin. Okay, so we have our plugin activated right here. Now to find the settings page for this plugin, you're just gonna to go to settings, and you're gonna be looking for head and footer. So when we click on head and footer, that's gonna open up this, this plugin settings page, and you're gonna see right here the head page section injection, and then after the opening body tag. So this is actually really useful for installing Google Tag Manager as well. But since we're just installing Google Analytics 4 for right now, we're going to come back over to our Google Analytics profile. Now we already have this copy, just but make sure you're copying the correct Google Tag. The other thing to keep in mind is we see our Google Tag here, G and then hyphen D2Y88C. You kind of always want to look and make sure that when we are tracking whether or not we installed this correctly, that we have the correct tag installed as well. So you just want to make sure, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So come back over here, we are going to paste that piece of code right here under the opening header tag page section injection, scroll to the bottom, click on save. At this point, Google Analytics 4 is manually installed on our website and we never have to change this ever again. As long as this plugin is always active on our website and we never remove this tag, Google Analytics 4 will always collect data for our website. The way to double check this is by using a Chrome extension called Tag Assistant Legacy by Google. So I will put this link in the video description so you can easily find this. Um, I will also put the link to the WordPress plugin page so you can find that WordPress plugin as well. Though it's very easy to find by just using the search bar in the WordPress plugin store. So now what we wanna do is we wanna open up our website and what you wanna do is come right to your homepage and you wanna refresh this page. So if you haven't refreshed your page recently, now I just updated my homepage, still working on it, but over here in the top right corner, you're going to see our tag assistant by Google. If we click on it, you're going to see right now we have our global site tag installed and it matches our global site tag. Now, one thing you may need to do when you first set up Google tag assistant is when you install this Chrome extension, first off, make sure you just pin it to the very top so you can easily click it here. When you click it, you're going to need to, you're going to see disable here. So if I click on disable real quick, yours is going to look something like this when you set it up. It's going to ask you which type of tags you actually want to track select all of them, then click on enable and then refresh the page. When you refresh the page after you click on enable, it'll look for all the tags on your website. We have our global site tag. So Google Analytics 4 is manually installed on our website. If you have any questions about installing Google Analytics 4 manually, please leave in the comment section. This should be no problem for you and you can also add your Google tag. So this Google tag, as long as you're putting it after the opening header tag, no matter what website builder CMS you're using, you should be able to add that. You just need to make sure that your code doesn't update when you update themes, which can happen often in WordPress, which is why you want to use a plugin. So thank you for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.